accident on the trestle bridge above the Altamaha River in rural Georgia. There was a silence as scary as what had come before. At first, it was like a quiet, like people were in shock. I remember hearing somebody say, oh my gosh, she's dead. You might Great. The horrifying news that 27-year-old camera assistant Sarah Jones had been killed by a train on the set of the film Midnight Rider reached her good friends on the Vampire Diaries just a few hours after it happened. And I got the call. We just sat in the car going to set and it was just pure shock. She just left too soon. She definitely she had. She would have been. Yeah, it was just too soon. I've been working as an actor pretty much nonstop for 15 years, and I'd never experienced anything like it, where everyone just went home and crying. I, w I wanted to know what exactly, what do you, what do you mean? You know, how, how, how? I was angry, really angry. And for them to overlook something that jeopardizes the safety of the people that are working with them is absolutely, positively, it's unacceptable. Ever since the accident on February 20th, investigators have been trying to figure out who wasn't doing their job to keep this crew safe. The people who made poor choices that day need to be held fully accountable. Investigators would uncover this email sent to location manager Charlie Baxter on the morning of the shoot, in which the railroad refuses to grant the film permission to shoot on its tracks. Producer director Randall Miller and the rest of the Midnight Rider crew had no way of knowing when a train might be coming. As railroad safety expert and film consultant Art Miller notes. There is no freight train schedule I can rely on to make sure there'll be no train on my train. It's a day-to-day -day thing. There's not such a thing as a freight train schedule that approximates what, say, a major airline might publish. Someone at the scene apparently said only two trains go by, we're good to go. Well, that's not true. Attorney Jeff Harris has filed a lawsuit on behalf of Sarah Jones's parents. You don't shoot on a railroad track unless you absolutely are positive that you have permission to be there. And I think they said, well, you know, we don't have actual permission, but ultimately we're just going to try to steal the shot. If so, it would apparently not be the first time Randall Miller had stolen a shot. Take the subway scene from his 2013 movie CBGB, a scene he brought up in this panel discussion. You're not allowed to shoot in the New York subway, so I don't know if you know that, but you're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> and on the DVD extras from CBGB, shot mostly in Savannah, Randall Miller jokes about pulling off scenes like this one. This is a real house, and I don't think they fully knew that we were going to drop a piano down their staircase. All in good fun? Well, how about a child turned loose in a pasture? I mean, I don't think it's dangerous at all to have a little kid run through cows, do you no, think? No, no, no. One man wasn't laughing. Jay Self, then the head of the Savannah Film Commission. We had more complaints about the activities of this film than we did in any previous entire year. Self, who would be removed from his post after CBG left town by the Chamber of Commerce, says that a stop sign was removed by the production, another painted over. Cars were parked in handicapped spots or in front of fire hydrants. Minor issues perhaps, but often accompanied, Self says, by sheer arrogance. He would say, but we're trying to make a movie here, as if that somehow outweighed the safety or the welfare or the business of other people. It was like that's some kind of magic card. When CBGB was over, we were like, I can't believe nobody got hurt. Tragically, that was not the case on Midnight Rider. They thought they could make up their own rules. They pushed it too far. The audacity to put someone else's life in, in, in such danger. They wanted to get the shot, so whatever it took to get the shot is what they did. The entire crew was put in a situation where we all had to basically run for our lives. It's true, as shown by this startling new evidence just released today. Dramatic video taken by a camera mounted inside CSX Q12519. It shows the Midnight Rider crew racing off the bridge as the train that would need a mile of track to stop 
rapidly approaches the bed that's been left behind on one of the rails. Look again and listen as the dramatic scene unfolds. 26 seconds before impact, the engineer starts to blare the horn continuously. Three seconds before impact, it's too late to get the bed off the tracks. It sits there, while to the side, actors William Hurt and Wyatt Russell, along with two crew members, make it off the trestle. One second before impact, people cover their ears, clinging to the bridge for their lives. On impact, the bed becomes a deadly weapon. The train hits the bed, and the bed flies up, and apparently a portion of the hospital bed strikes Sarah and pushes her into the train. Hairstylist Joyce Gilliard suffered a compound fracture of her left arm. She's had to have a plate put in and is also suing the producers, the railroad company, and nearby landowners. It's not just my arm that was hurt. I suffered such a traumatic experience seeing my coworker, friend, lose her life because of someone else's negligence.